Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. In a previous video, I did the Battle of Miklos Horthy, and uh, this is the follow-up to that, sent in by Darth Vendor. He's one of my naval architects, it's a special tier of Patreon support, where you can just bypass the whole queue of a thousand plus scenarios that I currently have sitting in my inbox, and you can get your scenario featured almost right away. More information on that down below in the description, and of course, by doing that, you're also supporting me directly. Now, the story behind this one. After a nearly pyrrhic victory against the French in 1929, Austria and Hungary's naval ambitions still breathes the faintest of breaths. A new ceasefire treaty has been created, the Prague Agreement. The treaty, which was arbitrated by the UK, regulates the new Austro-Hungarian army and air force size and requires the nation to sign the London Naval Treaty from 1930. The old refit dreadnought that saved the reborn kingdom was scrapped, but from the ashes of the old, a new navy will be born. While the restrictions of the London Naval Treaty are brutal, it is no match for Austria-Hungarian ambitions, determination and outright cheating. A new school of thought of pocket battleships has come to the creation of a heavy cruiser filled with the latest technology, uh, newest design philosophy and follows most of the rules laid out by the LNT, which is of course the London Naval Treaty. This new ship has been completed in late 1930, just in time for a small conflict to burst into existence between Turkey, who had partially remilitarized the Bosporus, and the Soviets, who have been enjoying the benefits of free access through the Bosporus. A Soviet convoy has come to take the strait and re-establish demilitarization. However, in an attempt to restore relations between the former central powers, Emperor Otto von Habsburg has ordered Horthy to take the, newest, the newly created pocket battleship and destroy the Russian convoy. So, I get to have one heavy cruiser, and I'm going to take on four light cruisers and six transports. The mission is to destroy all the transports within four hours to prevent the landing of Soviet troops. Destroying the entire fleet will prove Austro-Hungarian designs can still compete. There are, however, some limitations, because in this scenario I have signed the London Naval Treaty. Gun caliber cannot exceed 8 inch. With a mixture of bribery and blackmail, and fudging the numbers, we've been able to push the displacement up to 16,000 tons, we have a budget of 36.5 million to make this heavy cruiser. It's going to be the pride of the modern Austro-Hungarian fleet with some of the finest experimental equipment available. So, one heavy cruiser, four light cruisers and guns no larger than 8 inch. Here we go. I really, really like the whole backstory, by the way. That was really well done. So my compliments to Darth Vendar for writing all that up and coming up with a follow-up scenario for this one. Now the price for this ship is going to be 36.5 million and my displacement is a maximum of 16,000 tons. I can go with either the Heavy Cruiser 2, which starts at 16,000, and that will look like that, or the Heavy Cruiser 1, which goes to 49. Uh, this thing has a really large hull form, which I believe makes it a more stable platform. Uh, affects the ship, acceleration, turning speed, engine power... Oh, right, sorry. Uh, it does not make the ship more stable. It makes the ship sleeker. And the better the hull form, the higher speed at the cost of lower horsepower. So I don't need as much. I would probably rather have a better stable ship. The higher the stability, the more accurate the guns on high speed and bad weather. Stability is further affected by ship design. Right. So I'm going to set this as minimum. Um, uh, let's say going for 33 knots, if I can make that happen. Range, not important for this scenario. Bulkheads, all of them. Gear turbines, too. That already puts my price at 20 million. I'm first going to set up a main tower. And a secondary tower, because these will be expensive elements of this ship. If I can even fit those. And uh, we're going to need a good rangefinder, and we're going to need a radar. I'll take a Gen 2, but that means that I only have 30 million remaining. And that's without a single gun. 31 million. 
Engine efficiency, 36.5, but I can still buff that. There we go. Right. Uh, dual hull. Anti-flood 2. Citadel. All or nothing. Reinforced bulkheads 1. I'm not going to go for 2, because it's probably too expensive. Then... Yeah, you know what? I might need to switch back to gear turbines 1. Because the engine cost is going up quite fast. And this will save me some. Oil. No, that really makes shit very, very expensive. Not doing that. These will drive up the price 75%. This is... Uh, this is not too bad. Well, the cost isn't really that high. Never mind. Okay, guns. 8-inch uh, maximum. So I'm not really going to be packing a lot of firepower in the sense of uh, large guns, but I might have lots of guns. Or not, because it doesn't fit on the ship. Looks like it's going to be a pretty traditional design. A, B, and X turret. Because I simply cannot afford anything more. What I can do is get these to auto-load, putting out a shell every 17.3 seconds. Propellant. This is also a great way to burn money. Well, it's not that bad. Lit out. No, it's actually quite doable. Okay. Let's stick to high TNT, because this ship is supposed to be an experimental ship with lots of new technologies. Uh, turrets. I'll go for advanced hydraulics because I still want to have a bit of budget left to make sure I put some secondaries on. The secondaries can only be 5 inch or smaller. Um, unless I can find... Yeah. Something like that. This is purely experimental. Oh, it doesn't fit. Aww. I was hoping to just put a single barrel on there. Uh, why a single barrel? Well, because I never use them. And I, because I think they look interesting. <laughs> I never use them, and I think they look interesting. Are they effective? Maybe. They have a reload of 7.3 seconds. Um, that is not nearly, at least for the amount of shells that you're putting out, it's not nearly as good as the 11.1. .1. Your accuracy might be slightly better. 69%, nice. Uh, versus 65% at 1,000 meters. Yeah, see, arguably, a triple is always better. You throw out more shells, you just have a little bit of accuracy cost, but if you wanted to build three single-barrel turrets, you'd be looking at about a 210 cost, 210 tons, versus only 159 for a triple. So this just overall makes a lot more sense. It also has a decent field of fire. Now, ideally, I'd have another one over here, but that does not fit on this particular ship. I cannot make that work. Still, this can be handy if I'm dealing with the light cruisers. Good rate of fire, uh, probably pretty fast turning with the advanced hydraulics. So those could be valuable assets. Then I'm going to go with uh, a 5 dual here and a 5... No, not a 5 dual there, because that doesn't fit. 4 dual... A 4 dual does fit over there. Pretty decent firing arcs. You know what? I'm going to go for another 4. So that I share my um, magazines between these two guns. Why a double, not a triple? That's an excellent question. And seeing as I don't really have a good reason, I might as well go with a triple. Triple inch or 3 inch? Yeah, they barely weigh anything. It's just 11 tons. And just for good measure, I'm going to put these things on in reverse. Wait. When I put you on like this, you don't have a firing arc? And you do? Right. Can you not turn over that turret? Is that the problem? Unfortunately, I cannot build medium barbettes. Well, I mean, I can build them, but 
I was looking for the short bar bets for secondaries. Right, so that's not going to work. Uh, in that case, you're all going to be looking forward, I guess. Seeing as you just don't want to rotate otherwise. Armor. Um, as usual, I'm probably going to keep it as is because I simply cannot afford to do much else. I'm very, very, very close to the amount of cost, or to the total cost that I have available. I'm going to go with a standard auxiliary or no auxiliary engine, no special propeller shaft. The only thing that I might be able to save on is this. Just having a turtle back armor scheme. For a cruiser, that might be enough. Because you're going for more plunging fire protection if you go for an all or nothing armor scheme. Yeah, let's go with the turtle back armor scheme and then put on a bit more armor itself. Can we go for six inch all around? Looks like it. Give me 10 inches on the turret. Um, maybe seven and a half inch on the secondaries. I'll take 10 inch on the conning tower. Turret top a bit more, especially since we're starting at 17,000 meter range. It said in the description, by the way, of the scenario, it said, uh, oh shit, I'm too expensive. Uh, it said that I could have a starting range of 1700, but that's not possible in this game. Aside from not being possible, it would put me immediately in the middle of that group. Which is really not where I want to be, because they might have torpedoes. So I'm going to say that that's a typo, and say it's the minimum range of 17... Oh, shit. Crap. Uh, that the minimum range is 17,000 meters, which would also mean that I still have to go look for those ships. Alright, 6 inch belt, 5 belt extended, 2 deck extended, 3 deck, 10 conning, 10 turret, 7.5 secondaries, and 5 turret top. And I think that that's it, because I'm very close to maxing out on both weight and displacement. Oh, sorry, weight and um, cost. The only thing that I would like, there we go, 0.14 weight offset. Pretty traditional looking cruiser right here. Pretty traditional looking ship. Let's take it out for a fight. The Salzburg. So we're pestering a couple of light cruisers and six transports. They're all the way over there. What sort of build do you have? Some six or seven inch guns. Uh, de are you a submarine? <laughs> Good lord, look at that turn. The whole deck's a wash. And a few torpedo tubes. Looks like three per side. I'm already in range. And with a radar, my starting accuracy is a very solid 5%. That's very nice for the first shot. And it just dropped to 2.5%, probably because the enemy is maneuvering. Oh, and inside of a smoke screen. Right, you know what? Let's target one of these transports, because the transports are the mission. The mission says you need to take down... Uh, destroy all the transports within four hours to prevent the landing of Soviet troops. So it's a bit aggressive, but I'm going to take down those transports with a couple of 8-inch guns. Uh, might be slight overkill, but hey, it's the mission. Gotta accomplish the mission. We cannot have these guys land. And if the light cruisers want to make sure that they do, then they're gonna have to actually come out and fight me. And not cower in their smoke screens. If you cower in your smoke screens, you're gonna get what you have coming. And that is a couple of dead supposed troop transports. This does not look like a happy transport. One thing I have to be a bit cautious about is the amount of ammunition of 8-inch that I fire at these transports. Because these transports are also perfectly capable of getting sunk by uh, 6, 4, and 3. So firing at them with an 8-inch gun could be considered overkill. What do I need to get into range? 8.6. I'm sort of cruising along. I'm intentionally not fully charging in because I want to try and get an identification on these tr the, the lights first. 
because I want to have an idea about what sort of torpedo I'm facing. If it turns out that these are um, sneaky torpedoes, then I'm going to have to try and take them out at range and continue more maneuverall, or more maneuvering overall. If they're not too sneaky, then I can probably push in a bit more. I'll have to maneuver a bit more. But um, if they're fast torps, they'll be much easier to spot, even if I don't have any kind of a sonar suite. First hit on the light cruiser. I quite like this cruiser design. The 6 inch look a little out of place there, but just an ABX setup. Not bad. It looks like a very compact ship as well. Salzburg. Very compact. And maybe that's going to help with my turning circle. 444 meters. That's a respectable turning circle right there. Now, I'm not maneuvering very much currently because I don't really fear the torpedoes yet. The AI is generally a bit more cautious with torpedo launches than I am. And I don't believe that the guns can do too much to the Salzburg. I don't think they're going to be that dangerous. Okay, they did launch. What we have over here is the uh, light cruiser Almaz with torpedoes, 48 knots, range 14.7 with 13% more visibility than normal. That is potentially problematic. Let's once again train the guns onto that transport. See, there they are. One, two, and assumedly three over there, otherwise I would have spotted it here. Now, once again, pestering one of these transports same time closing the distance against the uh, rest of the convoy because at nine and a half kilometer range I'm just not that likely to hit whereas if I charge in then the accuracy goes up but the torpedo risk also goes up so it cuts both ways I might be easier to hit but I also have a better chance of wiping out the light cruisers pretty quick so right now just 0.8 and that has to do with these things maneuvering. The Kuban. Kuban has a chance to pen me of 6%. So it looks like all of that armor is helpful. If you guys want to cower inside your smoke screens, that's fine. But I'm not going to play that game. I'm going to go after the transports. Uh, cease fire on the main armor. Let's just have the 4-inch do this work. I still have 1,100 rands left. Should be plenty, but the 4-inch are more than capable of doing this. Seems like the other two batteries are not quite in a firing position yet. They can fire over the 6-inch by the looks of it, right there. Maybe they just don't quite at the angle yet. Three shells out. Yeah, now it looks like the other guns are also firing. Oh crap, I'm looking at three inch, not the four inch. All the four inch were firing. Herp a derp. Three inch need to be in 6.8 kilometer range and they are now joining in. It looks like the four inch though are chewing through this transport pretty quickly as is. Are they even doing damage? Oh yes they are. 74, 47... Yeah, this is a very efficient ship to deal with transports. The light cruisers don't seem to be too interested in dealing with this battle or with this heavy cruiser yet. That can change at any given time. It looks like the Almaz might be interested. So let's bring the main guns back online. Uh, sweep right through the secondary tower with the X turret. Bring those guns to bear. And see if we can land a couple of shots on the Almas. 6.5% chance to hit. Not great. Got the light cruisers Oshakov, Kuban, Almas, and Don. 
Chance to hit's going up. Chance to pen is really good. So I just need to hit it. How well defended are these things? Standard bulk hits. Anti-flood. Two. So similar to mine. We have flooding on the Almas. I hope I can add some more to that. And make sure they slow down. Flooding some even more. Good hits. That was probably 6 inch fire. Was it? Yep, 6 inch fire. Doing a little bit less damage. And the Almas is still trying to fight back with 6 inch guns. Which still only have a 6.1% chance to pen me. So I'm not too scared of this light cruiser. Uh, more flooding towards the stern it seems. This ship has a really low freeboard. Have they been taking hints from wargaming again? Look at that. That shit's not normal. Sure, the ship is a bit flooded, but it's not that bad. And this is moderate waves. I swear there's a turret just almost entirely underwater here. This one. As far as I know, turrets weren't exactly watertight. Since they weren't supposed to be submerged anyway. So I hope that that's going to be addressed in a future patch. Because that just doesn't look right. Alright, Vladimir. Looks like it's the end for this transport. 19,000 tons. That's a pretty substantial transport. It does look, though, like it's going to flood out, despite maximum bulkheads. What's going to get you? Are you seriously alive at point 0.1 flooding? No, there you go. Now, I'm maneuvering towards this site to make sure that light cruisers are very much unhappy with launching torpedoes because there are transports in the way. If the AI has a friendly in the way, they generally don't torpedo as quickly. They still sometimes do, but for example with the Vladimir in the way, they, well, more often than not they don't torpedo at all. Hold on, this ship was flooding. Looks like the anti-flooding is doing great work, because now the flooding is entirely cleaned up. There's nothing left. Yastrep sinks, that's the second of four transports. Next up is the Tallinn. Kuban still hasn't launched. You know what? I might keep that one alive. Uh, all guns on the Don. Range only 5 kilometers out. Accuracy 8%. Rest about similar. Now I wonder if high explosive is going to be enough. Because it is just a light cruiser. Maybe high explosive damage is going to tear through the... Uh, what sort of skin do you have? 2.2 inch of belt armor. Let's see, we got 8 inch on the way, I think. Yeah, it's setting fires and it's ripping open the ship in several spots. And... Ooh, narrowly avoided there. So the ship turned. Not torping. The Ochakov has just torped. Let's turn. Almaz not torping because the Tallinn is in the way. And over here we got the Kuban who also launched a few torps. So I'd say it's a good moment to start turning around. Hopefully with the hydraulic turrets I'll be able to keep those guns on target. But I think the ship turns faster than the rudder. Or than the, the turrets. Fire on the Ochakov because it just happened to get in the way. Come on, buddy. Alright, that will do. Let's level out. A bit more towards the Tallinn, so I'm going to have an easier time wiping that one out with the secondaries. And also I'm going to try and position myself here, so the light cruisers are once again between myself and the transport. With once again... A blockade for their torpedo launch. He 
Because light cruisers are proving to be a bit of a, a hassle. They're not that dangerous. They've barely damaged the ship. I think the most deadly weapon that they have is their torpedo tube. But they just don't seem to do enough damage with those six inch guns of theirs. Oh, you just send out torpedoes, did you? How rude. Now, for those of you wondering why I'm firing high explosive, uh, because it's enough. If I fire armor piercing, there's a really high chance that I'll just punch through the ship and fly out the other side with the rest of the shells. So, light cruisers, usually uh, HE is enough. I will, however, let's just try AP for a bit. I want to know what, what kind of damage numbers I get. Turn the guns. Chance to hit, 54. Oh, sorry, chance to pen, 55. But the ricochet chance is exceptionally high. The Don probably won't launch with the Tolan in the way. Because if they wanted to torp me, they'd have to torp in this direction. Seeing as the Salzburg is pushing that way pretty quick. I've got to keep a close eye on the Grom. I don't want that thing to escape. Overpen. Even at that angle, I overpen the ship. So, high explosive. More than what I need. Or maybe not more, but exactly what I need. Damaged. That was a good pen. Still, I gotta say, these things last longer than I'd expected. They are pretty tough. Especially the Olmaz, which was the ship that I just screenshotted. That was the one that had its turret underwater. And now it seems to be perfectly happy. All the water's gone. <laughs> All the flooding's been fixed. And most of the ship is dry again. Inside the space of, what, 15 minutes? That's a really impressive pump. Let's leave it at that. One thing that I cannot easily fix is their structural integrity. Which seems to be going down pretty quick. It looks like they won't have a lot of structural integrity left. 54%. How are the guns doing? Four, yeah, the 4-inch are not doing that much damage. Okay, now you got even more flooding. Chance to hit, even at 3.3 kilometer range, is only 7%. Ship's maneuvering pretty... Oh, crap. Pretty seriously, making it difficult to hit. Rudder right maximum. Should be able to avoid that. Watch Kof, almost ready to launch. Kuban also launched. Oh, crap. Oh, shit. I didn't put any kind of a torpedo blister on this ship because I wasn't planning on getting hit by torpedoes. I thought I could just as well easily dodge it, but no. And it looks like the Almaz is now either trying to drop off survivors at the Tallinn or the other way around. I'm not sure which one it is, but it looks like they're both going to go down. One problem that I now have is that the turning circle is worse and my speed is going to go down. So if the Don decides to torpedo me, that could be pretty painful. Guns on the Don. No, turn away, turn away, turn away. I don't mind operating at about 3 km range, but 1.5 or 1.4 is too short. Are your port side torpedo launchers still operational? It looks like they're operational, but they're just not targeting. Flooding's been cancelled out. Now let's see if I can also pump it out. Because I also have anti-flood too. Only 700 rounds left and it, I don't feel like I have a lot to show for it. Nope. It looks like my anti-flood systems are not nearly as good as that of the Almas. Because I am stuck at 76%. Oh, shit. I just caught the Almaz in the middle of a launch. There we go. Uh-oh. 
Maybe I can torpedo beat my way through this one. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Port maximum. Steady as she goes. That's it. Now, I still don't believe that the guns from those cruisers are still doing a lot of damage. Uh, the torpedoes are. But the 6-inch overall, with 92 hits, have only done... What's that? 48 points of damage? I think that's all. So the torpedoes are much more of a threat. Uh, this one with main, that one with secondary. Let's carry on. Now, I had 4 hours to sink these guys. I still have 3 of those left. Time to take down the Tolin, as it doesn't really have any value for me alive anymore. There goes the Almaz. And now the Ochakov and the Kuban, which for some reason have just decided to piss off all the way to over there. Nine clicks out. Oh, they might be shielding the Grom. There goes the transport. Speed, 25 knots. Plenty to catch a 13 and a half knot transport. Ammunition should be perfectly fine. As long as I don't squander too much of it. Eight kilometer range. You've taken some damage and the Kuban looks like f perfectly healthy. You also look like you just torped again. So let's maneuver some. I don't feel like eating another torpedo. There's a few. Kuban has six left. Ochikov also six. Oh, uh oh. I overcorrected my course and steered right into the other set. There's another one. Range is 6-4. Once these guys are outside of their smoke screens, I'm going to open up again with the main guns. I set them to save ammo. Not that I really need to, because I still have plenty. Let's go. Just have to get closer to the Ochikov. There we go. Flooding. What's the speed that she, she can normally do? 38.5. She's a fast boat. Um, and a turning circle of 588 meters. That is at full speed. So at less speed, she'll probably be quite agile. Although these do seem to be... They're pretty long ships relative to their width. As opposed to the Salzburg, which I think has quite a nice width to length ratio and that gives me that pretty good turning circle much cost flooding damage to the rudder is substantial and with that compartment flooded it means oh shit that she might not be able to get out of the way that she might not be able to fix that because the compartment's flooded you don't have any torps you still have six, but now I have the Ochikov between you and me. Keep going. Keep the Ochikov between the two of you. Just make use of the position of the enemy fleet. Make sure that they cannot do much against you. Now they switched position, so now the Kuban could launch. Let's turn away. Kuban's coming in. 459 left on the mains. Plenty on the secondaries. Come on, give me a good salvo on the Kuban. Chance to hit 16%. Reason for me to switch fire from the Kuban, or from the Ochkov to the Kuban, is that the, the Kuban is currently a slightly bigger threat, as she still has torpedoes, and she came in in a pretty aggressive fashion. So I thought that she might come in to try and torp me. Now I'm getting quite a lot of penetrations from the three inch. Eight inch are also getting good pens. I still have to keep quite close to the transport though. That's still the main prize. Let's put the secondaries on the Ochikov. 
Because she doesn't need too much more damage. A little bit of flooding could help. Look at that. 58. No, never mind. It's holding at 58, and now it's flooding again. Good performance on the Salzburg part. Damage taken, 737, most of which with the torpedo. Damage done, 19,000. Now we're talking. Wachikov, slain. Grom, still at 7 kilometers out. Kuban still has 6 torpedoes left. Are your launchers damaged? Hell they are. When, whenever I ask, are your launchers damaged, they always start torping me. It's like some sort of jinx. It's like... It's become a bit of a pattern. Are your torpedoes working? Yes. Would you like me to show you? Here you are. Here are the torps. Enjoy. Secondary is working over the Grom. Which is dying quickly. I wonder if the guns have done as much damage as I think they have. Um, 8,000, let's say 8.4k 8 with the mains. 5,500 and 4,500 with the, the eight, with the fours and the threes. Impressive. Then again, transports, they take damage like nothing else. So it makes sense. Kuban is out of torpedoes. So now we can safely push into the transport and deal with that light cruiser. I will have to go back to port to resupply after this one. And I'm also looking forward to seeing what scenario follows this one. So Darth Vendor, let me know through the uh, known link to Patreon supporters, that is, <clears throat> what the scenario is going to be for December. Looking forward to seeing what Austro-Hungary is up to next. Sorry, Austria-Hungary, not Austro-Hungary. Come on, Kuban. If you can just sit back and let me close in, I can try and make this quick. There we go. I should keep this design in mind for the campaign. I don't know when it's coming out, but I quite like the performance. Just as a, a raider dealing with a couple of light cruisers, uh, it could have done easily as well against destroyers. Although for safety features, I could probably do the sonar or hydro suite. Because one of those torpedoes hit me, and that was one torpedo too many. I really didn't have an excuse for that thing hitting me, except for just not being cautious. So that was entirely on me. Anyway, this is going to be the end of the Kuban. Salzburg. It's going to need some repairs. But none of the systems actually got damaged. Looks like the X turret took a bit of a hit but is functional. Same for the B-turret. Nothing's been destroyed. No modules whatsoever have been knocked out. Nothing red, anyway. So, Salzburg reigns victorious. The Soviet invasion has been stopped. And what this means for the Bosporus, well, that is up to Darth Vendar. Join me next month, as we're going to be seeing, hopefully, the uh, succession to this part. The next part of this story. Darth Vendor, thank you for sending in. Thank you for your support. Uh, if you guys want to support me on Patreon, I'd be very grateful. Link down to that below in the description. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the scenario, and I'll catch you next week for another scenario. And of course, sooner for another vid. But that's a different story. See ya.